Hi there, everybody. We've been getting some requests to try to update some of our videos here for Ditch Assist. So I thought I would start off doing a simulator run here in the Ditch Assist app. This is something for those of you who have never seen the system. You can actually download the app for free. You can then uh, test it on your device, your Android device. If you have an Android system with uh, preferably a 10 inch screen, you can download it and uh, follow along here with me on the simulator. So to begin with here, we've started up the app. We have our world view here. I'm going to hit these three small dots up in the right corner and hit simulator. And that's going to take us into our simulator. Now I prefer to use the use NMEA. And then I'll hit start. And this will actually start a little survey run that we've done in the past. Now I'm going to hit the start button here on the survey screen just because he's moving here already. And you'll see the GPS data here on the left side of the screen shows RTK. I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to hit that bullseye in the top right corner of the Google map. That's going to zoom us in on where our survey is. Now, if you haven't already downloaded the area uh, while connected to the internet, you just would have a uh, white grid screen, which is fine. You don't actually need an image when you're using Ditch Assist. It just makes it look prettier, maybe a little easier to go by. But the system will work either way. These green dots are our data points in our survey. So every time we record the data, we leave that little green dot. The blue dot, of course, is us. And uh, this would be Simon here a couple years ago near Oakville, Manitoba, driving along on the quad and uh, taking these data points here. So we should be done here pretty quick. We're just doing a little S curve here so that you can see that we can do curves in Ditch Assist. We're not just straight lines anymore. And we're almost done. So there we go. We've stopped moving in a bit. We'll lose our GPS data. And there we go. So I'm just going to hit stop here now. So our survey is done. And you see the slope IQ uh, button here lights up. So I'm just going to press that. And this takes us into our slope IQ screen. Now we have a few options here. You can see the smart grade is selected. And that's what you're going to use most of the time. That's basically slope IQ. And that is going to allow us to set a minimum slope that we want to see in our ditch. We do have the option of turning that off and just doing single grade. So this would allow us, if we were just wanting to do a flat plane over and over again across a field, like we're using a laser, uh, we use that first survey pass to go by, we put in a target grade, let's say it's 0.1% negative slope. And then as we work our way across a field, you know, work our way perpendicular across from the pass of the survey, it would recreate the exact same pass over and over again, the same way as if you had created a laser. Uh, now, most of our guys aren't interested in doing that. They just want to uh, do variable slope ditches. So in that case, I'm going to put in a, I'm going to change this to smart grade, and I'm going to put in a minimum grade. 0.1% is usually fairly steep. I prefer something like 0 0.05 typically. It's down to personal preference. You can make it whatever slope you like. Now you probably noticed here that when we put it at zero, the box turned red. Now typically what that means, if the box turns red, it means that we're trying to put in a slope that doesn't work. Usually what it means is that you need to change that negative sign to a positive sign. So if you survey from high ground down to low ground, your target slope should be a negative slope. It's a negative grade. If you survey from low ground to high ground, then you're going to need a positive slope. So if that, if you put in a slope and that text box turns red, that's what's going on there. The depth guidance, I'm not going to show you just yet. We're just going to hit propose and bang, here's our plan. So this is a plan with a, anywhere we have less than 0.05% negative slope we are going to cut. So you can see we have a cut here at the beginning, a little ways down, just over 100 feet down, a little over 200 feet, and then so on. Now, if I want a better idea of how much soil I'm moving, you do have your elevation marks along the left-hand side. But that's where this depth guidance comes in. So I can put in, let's say, a depth guide of four inches and hit propose. And what that does is it 
recreates the terrain profile, but four inches lower. And if there's anywhere that that bottom terrain profile crosses over the green line or your plan, you know you're cutting four inches or four inches deeper. So in this case, at the beginning, we are cutting more than four inches deep. But pretty much anywhere else along the plan, aside from a couple points here towards the end, we're going to be cutting right at four inches. Now, if I want a better idea, I can actually bump this up to six inches, hit propose, bang. You see at the beginning, we're going to be cutting six inches deep. So this helps when we're looking at our side profile later on, and we're trying to determine how much we need to nudge the blade. So I know I got a maximum cut of six inches. And if I know I can only pull a two inch cut, I know I need to nudge us four inches above grade. So that will save me some time for nudging later on. It's something that really makes the nudge function a lot easier to use. So I'm gonna decide that I like this plan. So I'm going to hit the back button on the screen. And now you can see that we have survey done. You see that line there uh, of our survey points. I'm going to go to implement slope IQ now. You don't just go to grading. You need to push implement slope IQ and that takes all the data forward for you. Um, you'll see the uphill and downhill buttons are grayed out now. We don't need to use them. Your target grade will say one. That's normal because uh, it's just reading whatever slope IQ told it to do. So don't worry about any of that top part of the screen. What I'm going to do now is start the simulator run up again. And we're going to drive over this plan. Just hit the start button and then back. You can see our blue dots start at the beginning of the survey. And I'm going to hit the start button here. So now here we go. Now you can see our blue dot on the side profile map here. It's following along where we're going. So that'll tell you whether you have, you're coming up to a cut point or not. On the actual Google map screen, you can see that we're leaving marks behind us. If it's a red mark, that means that we are still too high and not on grade. If it's a green line, then we are on grade. So you can also follow the arrows on the right hand side of the screen. So if the arrows above the grade marker turn red, then that means that we are too high and need to go down. If the ones below the grade marker turn red, that means that we are too low in that point and need to move up. So here we can see we have a few points that we need to finish that were still too high because we didn't have a scraper attached in this case to actually level them out. So as you come to the end of your pass here, typically then what you would do is just press the stop button. You'd pick up your scraper, turn around, just hit the start button again, and your scraper will go down automatically to the target elevation, uh, taking into account whether you've nudged or, or not. Um, now, one difference to keep in mind is the difference between stop and hold. So when I press stop, our control to the valve stops, and we stop leaving markers behind us. So with a scraper, that's handy. Your scraper's full, you need to go dump it. You would hit stop, close your gate, lift up the scraper, go dump it, and you're not leaving any markers behind you as you travel across the field. The difference with hold is when you press that, you've turned off control of the valve, but you're still leaving markers. And that's handy if you're using the manual override, then you can still leave marks to know what you've done and whether it was on grade or not, but you're doing it manually. So uh, that's the difference between those two functions. Um, but that is essentially all you need to know to make a ditch in Ditch Assist. If you know where your ditch is going to be, you survey it, put in your target minimum slope, hit implement slope IQ, and go to work. So I'll try to make some videos of some other ways of using Ditch Assist as well, but this is the basic. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to give me a call at 204-871-5004, or check out the website at ditchassist.com. 
and I look forward to talking to you. Thanks. Take care.